Hi, it's David with Scuba Pro, and Alan Williams is with me today from Ray's Diving, and we're going to talk about uh, configuring a single tank or double tank backplate. In other words, how to get the harness to fit the diver properly. Once the harness is set for single tank diving, it can migrate into double tank diving, or if you're buying the backplate for your double tank configuration, then we'll show you how to set that up, and then you'll be good to go. In this particular case, we're using the PureTech, and the PureTech comes from Scuba Pro with what we call the extender system built on. This allows you to be able to extend, if you'll hold this for me, Alan, it allow you to extend out the webbing or cinch the webbing up, being able to pull it tight without having to worry about it being fixed. Some people like that, so they can simply get in and out of this, the system quickly. Other people prefer for this to be fixed. So we're gonna kind of show you both ways. So we'll help Alan get in his plate here. And a couple of things that you wanna look for when you're setting up a back plate. Today, we are got a lot of sun, so we're gonna not burn Alan up by having him in the dry suit at this moment, so we've got him in street clothes, but ultimately, if you can, it's best to go ahead and put them in their dry suit or whatever their thickest configuration would be that they'd be wearing uh, when you're doing this adjustment. At the base of your neck, you have a, a vertebra right here about across the line of your shoulders. You really want the back plate, the top of the back plate, to be about that area. At the same time, you also want it to be centered in the middle of your back. You wouldn't want the bottom of the plate actually poking into your rear end. You would want it to set right at the base of your, of your back and, and, and your backside. The beauty of having the extender is Alan can grab the, the two straps and is able to pull this tight and it's going to tighten this up into place. So once he's got that configured, we want to make sure this is good and it's centered. Okay, go ahead and grab your crotch strap, everything, and let's put it all together. The crotch strap has a loop. The belt buckle goes through the loop. Then you weave the right hand side through the buckle. So this is just straight out of the box. Got the back plate. Obviously we wouldn't want the buckle all the way over on the diver's right hand side. You do, do want the buckle to clear the crotch strap, but the buckle should be somewhere just to the right of the crotch strap. Crotch strap needs to stay in the center. You wouldn't want the buckle directly underneath, but we have all this excess so that we can trim it. So we have a one size kind of fits all with the S-Tech Pure and Pro harnesses, and then you adjust them to fit, and then you trim off the excess and burn the edge of the webbing, and you've got it customized for the diver. So. We would tighten all this up and be able to have it. Uh, if you're using the, the X knife like Alan has here, then you would want that to be on the left-hand side of the crotch strap. That way you didn't have to worry about it being on the loose end and falling off every time you take it off. So it's on the buckle side. That way it can't slip off past the buckle. The placement of the D-rings should be such that when the diver is able to take their arms straight out, Okay, and then with their eyes closed, they wanna be able to touch those D-rings and that's gonna give them an idea of when they're going to clip hoses and clipping lights and things of this nature, that they can find these without having to take two hands or without having to look. Obviously, when you're underwater and especially in technical dives, you wanna be having your awareness of your environment and things to where you can do stuff without having to look down or look at your equipment. Kind of similar to when you're driving a car and you wanna be able to shift gears or turn on the windshield wipers or things, you wanna be able to read these features just rotely not have to sit and look at them each time you use them so that's what we're trying to build so we would want to adjust this so that it can go a little bit higher and allow us to have uh, a little bit the, the center of the d-ring about right there so that when Alan goes to fill these d-rings to clip off they're right where you need to be so one of the things we did with the pure and pro is we went from a standard tri-glide to a quad glide on the shoulder. So by having the quad glide here, it's a little harder to adjust, but once you adjust it, you're really never adjusting it again unless you go through some extreme changes in your, your weight or something, uh, you would never adjust this. So this would make sure that once this D-ring is in place that you don't have any chance it can slip. I prefer to put my bottles on in the water or if I'm right on the edge of the water jumping off a boat to have them clipped on, but I really don't like to walk from the, the, the boat or from the shore or whatever with the bottles hanging because they tend with the webbing to slide down the, uh, 
the D-rings. For some people that do prefer to dive that way, that's one of the reasons why we went to the quad glide, is that gives you the ability to, if you did walk with the cylinder, there would be less chance of losing that fine adjustment of your D-ring, okay? So with this, it's, it's very simple to do. You're simply gonna weave this excess back through the quad glide, and then you're gonna move that D-ring up so it would be a little bit more right here. It's also right where your, the fold of your arm and kind of your collarbone come in together is what you're looking for. Okay, so to recap, we're looking to have the back plate at that top vertebra right across your shoulder blade. You're wanting it to set on your, your lower back but not poke into your rear end. Using the adjustment of the waist strap, you're gonna want the buckle to end up here. And of course, the crotch strap is adjusted too. So you want it to be slightly uh, pulling down on the waistband, but you don't want it pulling down hard. You just want it to be fairly, fairly comfortable, snug, but not anything that's loose and not anything that's really kind of pulling you over. So that allows you to be able to have the ease of getting in and out. But remember the crotch strap is what's holding everything together. Cause when you get in the water and you inflate the wing, the wings want to try to go up towards the surface. And what keeps you from losing all this adjustment is that crotch strap. So the crotch strap needs to be, that's kind of the core of everything. Keeps the double stable on your back. Also keeps them from rising when you get in the water. Okay, the D-ring on the left hip is where we're gonna place the pressure gauge. And again, if we're using stage bottles later on, we would hook the neck of the bottle here, the tail of the bottle here. And generally you want the, the uh, D-ring here to be closer to the back plate. So you want it to be about where you can fold it closed but at the same time, it not strike the back plate. But if you try this on and you're wearing your suit or you're wearing blue jeans, it's kind of like along the seam of your suit is about where the center of the D-ring should be. Okay, so this is our ex extender. So again, we did 90% of the adjustment just by having the extender system. If you did not want to use the extender system, so if you want to go ahead and remove it, if you didn't want to use the extender system, then you can do all the adjustments we talk about. Put it at the right height, get everything where you want it. Don't put the little black plastic clips. So remove these, okay? These are the bungees to hold your, your backup lights down. But you would remove these two extender clips and instead on the back, once you had everything adjusted, then you would run the webbing through this triglide. This would be a true Hogarthian system to where there is no adjustability. It would just be fixed. So when you get out of your gear, you'd work a little harder to get your shoulders in and out because you wouldn't have that ability to just open up the, the harness with the extender. But you'd put a tri-glide here and a tri-glide here. And now I have a fixed system. I've lost that ability to tighten things up. Okay, so now I can't make it any, I can't open it and I can't close it. It's fixed which is fine. That's the way I've dove most of my life is once I configure my back plate height, D-rings, everything, crotch strap, then just use the tri-glide in order to make it a fixed system. You've got two options. These tri-glides come in the box as well as the extender clips. So you have right out the gate the ability to go either way you want to go. A lot of people really love the extender because it gives them a way to just get in and out real quick, tighten it up. If you were to use the extender system and you were worried about as you loosen it and take it on and off uh, it opening up too far maybe that you're very small wasted and you're worried about this slipping back through the the plate then it's a simple way to solve that is just take a scuba pro belt buckle slide it on the webbing kind of put it a few inches away and that way that would be the furthest that you could open it and the buckle would stop it from slipping all the way through okay so Pure tech with extender or replace the extender clips and put on tri-glides on both sides and you have a fixed system. So we've taken Allen and the Pure Tech, uh, S-Tech Pure Tech, and we've taken off the extender system and we've put on the uh, tri-glides on the back. So now we've done all of our fine-tune adjustment. You can see that his D-rings are right where they should be. And one of the telltales is Alan can turn and you can see he can reach and touch the top of the back plate. That's a, that shows you that it's where it needs to be. If it was sticking way up high, I mean, he really needs to, to reach. But if it's sticking way up high, that's gonna affect your trim in the water. And of course, if he can't reach it, then it's too low. And you can see we've got 
the triglides on both sides makes this a fixed system now so it, it can't move in other words when the when the harness is pulled on whether it's tightening the waist or pulling on the shoulders you can't make any adjustments because this is now fixed as he turns back towards the camera we can also see that we've got the waist buckle where it belongs so it's just through the crotch strap the crotch strap is at the center of the body and it's just snug not really pulling down and also not loose the buckles in the center and then you can see he's got his d-ring on his left hip close to the back plate but at the same time not too close and kind of in the center of his body we've not cut the webbing yet so we've got it just tucked under here so you can see it but once you're done get all this excess i would go to about right here past the knife and then i would cut that off round it and burn the end of it but you do want to leave six or eight inches of extra tail just because if you were to go to some really thick undergarments and stuff like that you shouldn't have any need to change the the harness it's going to be tighter getting it on but at depth it's going to be fine but you may need a little bit more in the waist because of just the the bulk of what you would have around the waist because they tend to bunch up a bit there in the undergarment sometimes all right so now we have a complete clean system one of the ways you can also check to make sure if it's good is if alan kind of bends over at the waist he should get a, a all the way over he should get a little bit of a droop here at the harness and you can see that this will allow him to be able to take a hand and he could stick it in if he needed to and that's about the room that you want to have when it's all said and done so being able to put your hand in there lets you know that it's not too tight. We got the D-rings where he can close his eyes and he can find them whenever he goes to clip off his lights or clip off his long hose. He can touch the top of the back plate. Crotch strap's in place, buckles just to the right of the, of the center of the crotch strap or the loop on the crotch strap. I mean, the right side is clean because he's got the long hose which you're gonna put underneath the canister and you don't want anything to block that or get in the way when you go to deploy that long hose. So this is clean, no D-rings. Just the one on the left for your pressure gauge and your stage bottles. And that's setting up a pure tech harness without the extender. And you saw how to set it up with the extender. Extender is kind of self-fulfilling, tighten everything. Just got to do the crotch strap and do your D-rings. So the Pro Harness is designed to be uh, more creature comforts as far as using our Monpreen padding. So you've got Monpreen padding on the shoulders. You've got it on your hips as well as the back pad. These all come standard when you purchase a Pro Harness. These pads could be added to a pure system if you wanted the, the additional padding for comfort. Again, for people that are diving in extremely warm environments, possibly you know in a rash guard or something really thinned where they would tend to fill the webbing more. I don't seem to have any problems with the webbing uh, as it is, but if you wanted to add more padding, you could. Also, it's gonna give you some unique opportunities to do some color coordinating. This is Monprene, the same as like on our Hydro Species and our Nova Fins, our Go Fins, other products. Products. We can make it in all kinds of colors. So you've got the ability to color coordinate it the way you wanted. You could have white, blue, pink, orange, any of the colors that we have with the Hydros or with the Nova Fins. You're able to buy those kits and put them onto your uh, Pro Harness system. So with the Pro Harness system, instead of the continuous webbing like we had with the uh, PureTech, we actually have two individual straps. So we have a left hand shoulder comes down, comes to the waist, one piece. We have a right side, one piece, comes through, shoulder, comes down and makes the right hand side of the waist. Where the PureTech was one continuous piece of webbing, this is two individual pieces of harness material. You'll notice that your first and primary adjustment is gonna be here on the shoulders when we put Allen in the, in the harness. We've already done some pre-adjustments. This will come in fairly loose to give you the ability to be able to snug it up. And then of course, from there, we have the ability to use our stainless steel. I like to think of them as like skydiver buckles. These are not quick release, so you don't have any potential for a failure point. With technical divers, we always wanna make sure there's not any potential failure points, meaning if you dropped a weight belt or a tank fell over or something, you'd have to worry about this possibly being cracked or something that could break underwater. So this is stainless steel and gives you the ability to of course loosen or tighten while wearing the system. So different from our PureTech, we get everything all adjusted, whether it be with our extender system or with the fixed with the triglides. Here, you have the ability at any time to loosen up the harness to get in and out based on what you're wearing, wetsuit, dry suit, thicker undergarments, etc. And then on the bottom, we have a little clip that allows you to take the tail, slide it onto the webbing under the arm and get rid of any 
the excess keep any of the dragging or, or flopping around that you wouldn't want to have potentially hurting the reef or damaging the environment. <laughs> we'll put Alan in the harness. Again, you want to do the same as we had before. You want to make sure that your D-rings are in the right place so that they're easy to be able to clip things to. And again, the waist works exactly the same as we'd have with the PureTech. You come around, pull your crotch strap through, run the buckle from the left through the center of the crotch strap. Take your waist strap, and again, all of this comes with extra because one size fits all, so you can trim it at the end for your personal excess extra length, excuse me, that you want to leave left over. Uh, generally, I would take about this much, leave about that much left over. I would cut that off, round it, and then we have these little rubber bands on the side that you can stuff this through. So with the Pro Harness, we actually have the, the two D-rings with the quad glides on the shoulders. We have our epaulette for holding our inflator, but we have a D-ring on both hips and the D-ring on the front and the back of the crotch strap. Again, because these D-rings are here, they're still completely movable. So you can take all this off and you can move it further back if you want. You can move it further forward. You would be able to customize. You could add more D-rings. Just because we have the, the holistic approach and, and streamlined approach of the PureTech with its five D-rings and we have this with its six D-rings doesn't mean you can't add or remove D-rings based on your personal need. They're, everything is, is removable. With this system, instead of undoing the, the waist to take all this out, you could undo the back bring the shoulder over and make uh, remove the D-rings on the shoulder if you wanted to. So just like before, if Alan will turn sideways, you can see he can reach his, the top of his back plate. We've already got this nice and adjusted back here. We've got everything snug on the sides. And again, if he kind of bends over to waist, you can see he can fit a hand through the, through the harness. But at the same time with this one, he's able, and that's with it sensed down, he is able to loosen or tighten based on what he wants to do. So he can let it out or he can cinch it down. Once he cinches it down, it's real easy just to slide these onto the excess webbing and that, or onto the side webbing, and that gets rid of that ex excess so it's not dangling. So this is the aluminum plate. As you know, we have an aluminum plate and we have a stainless plate. The aluminum plate is gonna be ideal, whether it be a pure harness or a pro harness, it's gonna be ideal for the traveling diver that wants something to be really, really lightweight and so that when they're not paying for excess baggage or for people that are naturally negatively buoyant and they don't want to have the, the weight of the stainless plate. For other people, based on the thickness of the undergarment, how cold of water you're diving in, thickness of the wetsuit or whatever, you may want to go with that stainless steel plate and that way you've got some added weight without having to just put it in, in on a weight belt or on your trim pockets. So we have both styles. The aluminum plates are black. The stainless plates, of course, as we mentioned before, are a polished, uh, shiny stainless. Again, we can show you the back. This is the aluminum. And you can see how we did the, the primary adjustments just by taking these up so that it brought the shoulders as high as we could get them. So as they come over your shoulders, that's the beginnings of trying to figure out where your D-rings are gonna be, okay? Nice, lightweight. And of course, we have the back pad on this since it comes with the, with the Pro system. So when we talked about the design of our S-Tech backplates, both the Pro and the Pure, we talked about how we went for having optimization, and meaning we have our 11-inch centers, we have our beautiful polished uh, uh, stainless steel plates, and we have our anodized aluminum plates, and we curved the plate, pressed in the places for our ergo, ergo nuts. But we also minimized the number of bolt holes that we put into the plate to maximize the use of our S-Tech additional features like argon straps and things of that nature. So as you can see, the back pad that comes on the Pro Harness, it has two bolts at the top, two bolts at the, at the bottom. That's representing these holes. And then there's additional hole here at the very bottom on each side here and here to where you can put the, the bottom of the, of the pad down. I usually remove these if I'm wanting to be able to stuff something under it like an SMB, then I'll leave these out, making it easier to get that in and out. But the additional four holes that you're seeing here, these are designed for our trim pocket system. So especially a single tank diver was, is going to maybe take the aluminum plate, travel internationally, then they get there, but they probably still need some type of lead for wearing a wetsuit or just to, to make them be able to sink. It may not be much, but being able to add a little bit of extra lead. So we developed a 
trim pocket system that utilizes a piece of webbing, our standard bolt and screw system that we have that holds on the pad that's used in other applications on the hydros. There's a webbing slot in the back of these pockets. It slides through, it bolts in these holes and allows you to be able to open this up and add some trim weights. As you'll see, it's also a nice convenient place for you to be able to tuck the excess webbing that you've adjusted out from watching our previous videos to be able to kind of keep that out of the way. I wouldn't recommend necessarily cutting this off because you never know when you might need to loan your, your back plate to a friend or you, you're going to something super thick and you want to do a little bit more adjustment than you can get right here. So it doesn't hurt to have these back here. They're going to be fine. So now we've reassembled our Pro Harness 30 pound wing in our single tank adapter. And you can see we have our trim pockets here on the back. I highly recommend that you put the weights in these pockets before you put it on the cylinder. It makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to get to it. You can simply fold the wing back, open the pocket, add the lead, clip it down, go to the other side, and that's easier than when it's on the cylinder. When it's on the cylinder, this gets a little congested, uh, but it will work on the cylinder. But now we have the ability to add some extra weight. And of course, we have the bottom holes, as we discussed, to where you could add a second set of trim pockets if you wanted to. The hole in the, in the side here is for adding a bungee. If you wanted to be able to put like a video light, you could use any of these holes. Uh, take the pad off, you'd have all of them. But this is an extra one in case you want to have a bungee for something that uh, you use for your type of diving. And of course, down on the bottom left, we have the ability to put our argon system. So slot strap comes through here. That's why it's a wider slot. You've got a small six cubic foot uh, argon bottle and a bungee system that goes on the bottom that allows you to wear that small argon bottle here. Everything has a reason when it comes to our, our holes in our plate and the design. And these four are for adding the Scuba Pro S-Tech trim pockets.